Hey everybody, on this video, got a uh, one inch mortise cylinder, it's a Yale Keyway. Pull this out of a gas station, it comes complete with a dead spider. And I just noticed that's, uh, that's awesome. Alright, so anyway, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to uh, shim it open and rekey the locks. I do not have a key for this. And the way that we're going to do that. And this can be done with a pick and a shim or a key blank and a shim key blank is easier so we're going to do with that key blank first thing is remove the cam and this is usually going to be on a mortise cylinder the cam is held on with number one phillips screws Okay, so we've got the cam off. Our spider's still dead, it looks like that's good. Moving around. And then what we're gonna do is <clears throat> with using a pick or a shim, I mean I'm sorry, or a key blank, you're gonna insert the shim into the back of the lock. And if you're using a pick, then you would basically take the pick, put it all the way to the back, lift the last pin up, and then try to push the shim in while you let the pin down. It can be done. I find it to be a pain in the ass, so I'd use a key blank. So, put the key blank all the way to the back, and what we're doing is actually pushing on the shim. Make sure I get this in the camera here. Pushing on the shim while I'm like kind of tapping, pushing on it while I'm slowly pulling the key blank out. And what happens if you move in there, what's happened is the uh, shim has just dropped, went between the bottom and the top pin in chamber five. You keep pulling the key blank out slowly while I'm tapping on it. And if you get too far where you're that just put it all the way back in let's see here and as you can see this lock is in pretty bad shape here if I had any other locks without keys I would use one of those but at the moment I don't so anyway Tapping on the shim, I'm pulling the key blank out. So I'm slowly pulling the key blank out while still tapping on it here. It's important too, you know, if you pull the key blank too far where you're not, okay, just got another one, this should be the third one. You don't want to force it all the way to the back, because you'll, there's, there's the uh, fourth one. Because if you force the key blank in, and there's the fifth one. No, that, maybe that was the fourth one. Because if you force, if you force the key all the way back in, you'll put one of the uh, pins through the shim, and it gets stuck, and it jams the lock up, and It'll be a video for another time on how to deal with that. Okay, there's the fifth one. Okay, so now that we've got the shim between top pins and the bottom pins, we're able to turn the lock, remove the key blank, remove the shim. I'm just going to leave the dead spider alone. And then we'll need a plug follower. Okay, so we'll take a follower. And basically just going to push the plug out, leaving the driver pins in the lock and got our key pins here. We don't need these, we're just gonna discard them. So dump them out. And uh, if I was actually doing this lock for a customer, I would clean it up, you know, take some tri-flow or something and you know, wipe it down and everything, maybe even drop the drivers and redo those, but I'm just doing this for the hell of it, so I don't care. So now we're going to take our new key that we're going to key the lock to, and this actually has the key code stamped on it. It's uh, 31426, and just in the interest of speed, I've already pulled the pins out, so I'm going to drop them in. That's a 4, 1, like, 
I'm sorry, three, one, four, two, and six. And then you'll notice that all the pins are flush on the top of the, of the uh, plug. Here's what you want. And then um, we insert it back in. Actually, something's going on with this here because it looks like pin pin five is not flush. If you look at it, I'm trying to look at the camera; it's not flush. So I either got the wrong side or something's up with it. So basically, I'm just gonna just drop that for now. Take six out. Uh, the rest look like they're fine, and also drop the driver right there. So to put the driver back in, the spring didn't come out. So, driver back in here. I'm trying to touch the gross dead spider. Kind of moth in a lock the other day. Okay, so that's back in. Now this is supposed to be a number six pin, so I'm gonna go back to my pin tray here. Either the size might have been mixed up or grabbed the wrong one or something. Every once in a blue moon you'll find a stamped key that's off too. It doesn't happen often, but I have had that happen as well. So number six is gonna be a 295. So yeah, it could have been pulled out of this tray and that's a gold colored pin and the rest of them are this purple color, so could could have been the wrong pin. Drop it in. Nope, it's still too high, so. Now there you go, it's flat. Okay, it's in there now. Nope, still too high. So. I can't imagine that. Two of these is wrong. It does say Yale number six, 295. So <clears throat> let me measure my pin. This is more trouble than you normally have to go through, but kind of cool what happened here. 295, okay. That is interesting. So this key appears to be off because the pin does measure 295 which is what the cut is supposed to be but it's too long so or there's something stuck in there which it doesn't look like so what I'm gonna do is since I've got a universal kit here I'm just gonna take a 290 and see if a 290 works and 290 looks like it's flush here so it looks like that's gonna work so yeah it doesn't usually happen but and that now it works Okay, so yeah, this says on the chart here, this is a lab universal chart. It says a six pin is 295, but you know, we put a 290 in it. You know, we're not talking about much of a difference. Um, I felt like finding calipers, you know, I would actually measure the key and see the key is off. But either way, uh, it's rekeyed. And one other thing, too, I can't stress enough is after you get, you know, you test it, you see it's working. Make sure before you pull the key out, you put your thumb over the plug so you don't pull the plug out and drop all the pins. And then, uh, so now that we got it working, take a put our cam back on. go almost down okay, and just tighten it up all the way so you don't want these coming loose because if the screws come loose then you key will get stuck okay, and we'll just test it out make sure that it operates everything seems to be fine on it 
So uh, that is how you shim open a lock and rekey it. And uh, that'll do it for now, and uh, we will talk to everybody later.